Hi, this is Nathan Pierce from F5's programmability and orchestration team. This video is about the initial install and setup of the iWorkflow platform. iWorkflow will be available mid-June 2016, where you will be able to download it from downloads.f5.com. I've already downloaded a copy. I've downloaded the OVA, which is compatible with my VMware Fusion environment on my laptop. We do also support other leading hypervisors. You'll see them all listed on the download site once it's released. Kicking off the installation, I'm just going to double click on the OVA. This has not been modified in any way. It's the same as what you would download yourself. We'll just save it with the defaults. We will read and accept the end user license agreement and the import process begins. While that's running, just a quick recap from the last episode in the iWorkflow 101 series. We have the application delivery controls. They are fantastic to make sure that your applications are fast, highly resilient and secure. These have many features, vast functionality, but sometimes deploying those, especially with today's pace at which we deploy applications and services, can take a little time. With F5's application services templates, which we call iApps, you can abstract a lot of that complexity. iWorkflow is a platform for deploying iApps to ensure that you're getting your performance resilience and security policy deployed at speed, but without having to enter every single mouse click and command. These templates presented to administrators require just a small subset of information that takes mere minutes and yet deploys all of that same rich functionality much faster and with less exposure to operational risk. So now the import is finished. I'm going to hit customize because the default is actually to bridge the network interface. That will not work for my demonstration because it will not reach my big IP on that interface. So we're just going to change it to one of my private uh, interfaces, 10.12.8.1.0. That is my management network. And now we say that I'm actually just going to disconnect the other interfaces because we don't need them in my very simple lab environment. So now that we've got that up and running, we'll hit the boot up button and there it goes. So this is iWorkflow booting up. There's the boot screen. Um, while that's booting, let's have a look at the lab environment that I'm using. So over here we have iWorkflow running in the management network. You see the 10, 1, 2, 8, 1, network. The big IP is also connected to that network. The big IP is also connected though to two other networks. We have the user side of the big IP proxy and we have the server side. The user side is the 10.128.10 network and then the internal we have the 10.128.20 network. So at the end of this setup what we're going to have is the big IP, the iWorkflow, sorry, platform. Um, set up license configured on the IP address and we'll do a brief overview of its operation and what we're going to do is have the iWorkflow discover a big IP virtual edition that's F5's application delivery controller and then we are done next episode we will go further and look at how to deploy application services templates so we'll just quickly check where we are we're still booting there so once we've got this environment set up, like I said, we'll discover a big IP device. Uh, there is a step in that process where it's going to update the big IP's REST framework. It's going to give the big IP some additional functionality so that we can uh, really streamline some of these workflows. iWorkflow is all about stitching together the workflows of your environment. Uh, there's some very advanced REST API extensibility that you'll see and learn more about in a later episode. But again, today it's all about just getting it up and running to show you how you can do the same in your own environments. So we should be getting near, there we go, it's booted up now. So the first step is uh, getting it networked so that we can log into the graphical user interface. So we're gonna log in with the default root user, the default is root and the default password is 
default, you'll see the prompt there says no license. Not a big surprise there. Anyone familiar with Linux or Unix is going to recognize this command. If config, the interface config. Now it's got a default of 192.168.1245. The default IP address. Now to save you having to learn all those Unix or Linux commands, we've actually got a neat little utility in here called config. So we're going to hit config. Here we go. And OK to set up the IP address. Now it's picked up default via DHCP. You'll take a note though from my lab environment, it actually says 130 on here. It's picked up 130. So just show you, to show you how this works, I'm going to change it to match the diagram. So I'm going to say no to the automatic IP address configuration. And I'm going to tell it, no, let's make it 130 just to be correct. I'm going to hit tab. Um, and OK. I'm going to go with the net mask and hit OK again. Do I want a default route? Yes, I do. In my environment, that default route is 1. OK, so 10.128.1.130, just like the diagram says, 10.128.1.1. Let's hit yes. OK, it's going to apply that information. Now, you don't have to do this step, but just to show you, there it is, all set and done. Okay, so now we're ready to log in via the GUI. Go to our web browser. So now, let's log in. HTTPS, oh, it has it in my history, 10 to 8, 1, 1, So let's connect to there. It's a self-signed certificate. We have just booted it up, so we're going to proceed anyway. Now we're going to log in using the default credentials of admin and admin. This is the iWorkflow user interface. So now we have the setup wizard. This is a first time run wizard to just get you up and running. Uh, in my environment, I do not have direct access to the inf in internet and F5's activation services. So I'm going to manually license my iWorkflow. So I've entered my base registration key here at the top, blurred out of course. The next step in the process, because we're going to do a manual um, get dossier, that's where some clever things happen underneath, and a dossier is generated for the licensing process. Once we have that dossier, you copy into your clipboard the information presented here, click the access to the licensing server. And from there, once you've provided this information, it will generate for you a license file. I've already done this process, so I'm going to paste my license file in here and hit save and continue. So on to the next step. License has been successful. It is now green. We're up to host connectivity options. So here is the host name uh, I've entered. I work for .local, just to be consistent with my environment. And we've got the default route set up. And in here we have high availability cluster. Here, IP address. Now, in my limited lab environment running on my laptop, I cannot run a cluster, but we do recommend that you set up a cluster. This will be covered in a, another episode how to build resiliency in your iWorkflow environment. I'm just going to run the one today to show you how the setup process works. Um, so, we'll hit save and continue to go with the defaults there. Next up, DNS and time servers. Time servers is very important. You can't, shouldn't overlook this one. If your iWorkflow platform gets different time than your big IP, it can cause some issues. They don't like to be um, different in that sense. So it's very important that you set up NTP environment. 
I don't have NP NTP running on my laptop, so I'm just going to manually keep track of the time servers. Um, this environment only runs for very short periods of time, so it's safe here. But if you're going to be running this in a lab or in a production environment, you definitely want to be setting up NTP to make sure all the clocks are nicely synchronized. Let's accept the DNS settings. Next up, changing of the passwords. Um, I'm going to do the right thing and actually change all of these from the defaults. And save and continue. So now we have the summary page at the very end and we can move forward to save and continue on that. And we have a platform that is up and running. So now we have the administrator interface of iWorkflow.